Welcome to Janet Teaches Drew Yoga. This video, I'm going to concentrate on the dog and the dog variation postures. And the dog has ways of, of dealing with you so that you, it's an inverted posture, the head is going to come down. So what you want to be aware of, if you have any high blood pressure or something like a detached retina, eye problems, then I will show you the adaptation, but you don't want to be coming all the way down. Um, with the blood rushing to the head, then an inverted posture, what it does is to actually refresh your vitality. So you're looking at things in a different direction, you're upside down, um, and you start to refresh what's going on there. So it gets you out of a stuck situation. At the same time, physically, we're going to be really stretching the backs of the legs. Um, you and it's all about the weight adjustment. If you've ever done dog posture before, you will find this version a little bit different, what we refer to as the Drew dog. But it means you actually achieve it in a safe way, um, rather than perhaps as you have done previously. If any of you've done it before, you'll know it's hard to get the heels down. With this one, we are going to get there. So we're going to do some little bit of preparation first. So we always just loosen up the body. So if it's just taking the wrist round, just working through the joints. And you'll find the different activations on the separate videos for activations. And then round the other way. Nice and loose in the body when you're doing this. Up and down. That's it. Wiggle your fingers. Lots of joints in those fingers. And circle into the elbows. And circle the other way. Up and down. And then just open up your shoulders, a nice dip in the knees, release and relax. Lovely, just give the arms a shake. And then taking the legs comfortable distance, just a nice twist on the spine. Lifting the back heel so that you're getting that twist. And letting the arms just flop against the body. Don't be putting any tension there. And then just do a couple of dipping the knees, coming to the front. And say, working the way through the joints. And then just bring your arms higher up the body. Tap yourself on the shoulder. Give yourself a hug with that spare arm. And back to the centre. Lovely. We're just going to do a little bit of work on the legs, knees, thighs and ankles, all those joints. So getting your weight in one leg, balance yourself, just have your hands lightly on your hips and then just lift the other leg. Now remember when you're doing a balance, have your focus slightly down and in front on something that's not moving. Just circle that ankle round and then circle the other way and up and down and then circling into your knee. And circle the other way. And up and down. And then open up the hip. And give it a shake. Now, if you have really struggled with your balance, just use a wall. <laughs> Always balance yourself, because this is about moving the joints. It's not about, oh, I can balance. So, yeah, use a wall if you need to. So putting the weight in the other leg, always have that strong leg. Nice flex in the knee, have them lift the toes and spread them, tummy in, tailbone under. And again, just take the ankle round. And then take the ankle the other way. I'm having a little dance, so I'm just going to rebalance myself. And up and down. Circle into the knee. Definitely doesn't want to balance, so I'll take my own advice and use a wall. And then circle the other way. And up and down. Let that ankle be loose at the same time. And then just opening up the hip joint. And go the other way. And give that like a little wiggle. So we've just loosened the body a little bit. Now I want to do one preparation stretch with you because you're going to be using the backs of these legs. Preparation stretches in full are on the uh, video. 
that you can look at separately. But for this one, where we're going to be working the backs of the legs, we need to stretch them. It's always about good preparation. The more you're prepared, the more you're able to achieve. So remembering how to come down on your mat, come down on one knee. So you're going to lie on your back, have your knees bent to start with and have one leg straight. Now you're going to be lifting the legs, so you need to put your abs on. So just gently pulling in and lifting the knee. Link your fingers, bring them round the front of the leg and really pull back. So you're pushing your back into the floor. Get your shoulders down if you can. So there's no gap here, you really push down. And then you push your heel away, that straight leg, and then you slightly lift. When you do that lift, it's breath in, engage abs in order to support yourself. So count to five and then gently lower. Breathe in, engage abs, push the heel away, lift. Only slightly off the floor because this is working the back, hence you're pulling the in as well, as well as actually getting the stretch in the back of the leg. So push the heel away, pull those toes towards you, gently lower. Breath in, engage abs, lift, push the heel away. And we're doing this lift five times, as well as holding it for a count of five. If you feel you need more stretch, you can do cold for a count of 10 and do 10 lifts. Really make sure you push the heel away, that you get the stretch in the back of the leg. And then you swap over, so you bring the other knee up, you pull in, get that back down, straighten the other leg, breathe in, engage abs, lift, push the heel away. Again, count to either five or ten, whichever you prefer. And where you're feeling the stretch, then on the breath out, release the breath through that muscle, allow it to relax, keep pulling this leg in so you're working the back, getting it flat into the floor. And then we always do a relaxation out of that counter pose. So engage the abs, pull both knees up, link your fingers around the fronts of the knees and have a nice rock. And again, pushing your back into the floor, get yourself a nice back massage. At the same time, you're relaxing the muscles you've just stretched in the legs. Nice rocking motion. And then pop your feet down. Always roll onto one side, pushing yourself up sideways. That way you've protected your back. Okay. So there are a number of stages of the, of the dog. You've got what we refer to as tabletop dog, which is a nice preparation stretch on its own as well. We do the full dog, the downward dog, and we're going to do the weaving dog, okay, which is going to help with your flexibility. So three stages. So first of all, we're going to do the tabletop dog. So you're going to be coming up to standing. So tuck your toes under, roll yourself up, head and shoulders last. Now you need something to hold on to. Ideal height, if you, to give you an idea, is your, your kitchen worktop. I'm going to be using a bookcase at this point. So you want to be far enough away that the arms are extended a good grip, because you don't want to be pulling away from it, good grip. Bring your feet back, comfortable distance apart, push your bottom away. Really feel that stretch, extend the arms, and your back is flat enough to eat your dinner off it. That's why it's called the tabletop dog. Now, if you've got somebody with you, what you can actually do is get that person to hold your hip joints and pull you further back, get that extra stretch. So you can do that for each other. Again, you're using the breath out to release to any muscles that need to. And 
And when you're coming up, you dip your knees, you walk forwards and you gently unroll. So it's a nice stretch to do that first thing in the morning towards the end of when you've got home from work, perhaps the working day, um, to just really ooh, open up. It's a lovely stretch on its own, but a really good preparation stretch. Now, if you have, as I mentioned earlier, any problems with high blood pressure or um, detached retina, something like that, then that is as far as you go. You do that tabletop dog. So you're getting the benefits, but you're not overdoing it to cause yourselves any problems. So the way we're going to go into the full dog, I'm just going to pull my mat a little bit further forward just to give you a demonstration of what I want to do. So as always, you're going to come down on your mat, come down on one knee. Now, those of you who've done classic dog will be used to doing it that way. Okay. Now, a lot of you will struggle to get these heels down. So what you end up doing is putting the weight in the wrists. Um, nothing really going on back here. So your weight is too far forwards. And what we really want is for you to be like that. So the weight is, is balanced between the front and the back. So a good way to achieve that. So watch carefully, let me demonstrate first. First of all, you want to be in the position you would be to start the cat. So you want your knees hip width apart and you measure that by two fists together. Okay. Make sure your legs are parallel and your toes are flat to start with. So we don't want to be crossing over or too wide out, nice and parallel. Your wrists are directly beneath your shoulders, so you're nice and square. Now, I want you to spread your fingers. That dog's got nice big paws, good firm paws. Now, you tuck the toes under at the back, you push up. Now, this is where things start to differ. I want you to walk to the side and very slightly forwards on, of the mat, right up on your toes, and then push that bottom back as if you're sitting down. We're well, keeping that position, just straighten the legs. So your weight is evenly distributed between your hands and your feet. If you're still struggling to get the heels down, just walk forwards a bit, okay? I'm just gonna walk back a little bit to where I was. Now you hold that for a good few breaths. Just steady breathing. And then we're going to come into what's called the weaving dog. So you're going to come up on your toes, bring the knees in, come forwards. Lift that bottom again, down on those heels, bring your body forwards up on those toes, back. So you bring the body forward and then you come back on those heels, the weaving dog. And then to come out, you bring the feet in, you come down onto your knees, and you would relax out of it in the extended child's nice. So I'd take the legs a bit wider, back on your heels first, extend the arms in front and bring the forehead down. Now, as I've said in previous videos, if you can't manage to get head and bottom down at the same time, please support your head by bringing your elbows under you, onto the floor and your hands underneath your chin. Okay, so let's work through that together. So let's do the preparation stretch, first of all. So you've got the feet comfortable distance. You extend the arms, good grip. Feet comfortable distance apart. Push that bottom away. Feel that stretch through your back. Sometimes people say to me, oh, I can feel it in my shoulders. Well, I've got news for you. They're the top of your back. Push that bottom away, get that stretch. Release on the breath out. Steady breathing, but it is breathing in and out through the nose. And keep feeling yourself being able to push a little bit further back. And then to come out of it, just bend those knees, start to walk yourself forward and unroll. Okay. So we're going to do the dog and the weaving dog. So bringing yourself down on one knee. Okay. Get those knees hip width apart, so two fists together, neatly between your knees. Have your legs parallel, your toes flat. Always look and check and assume you know where your legs are because you probably don't. Okay. Then bring the hands down. Now you want that nice straight line above the wrist and um, 
What's the body parts? Oh, yes, the shoulder. Nice straight line. Spread those fingers. That dog's got big paws. Tuck your toes under at the back. Push up onto your toes. Now stepping slightly forwards and to the side of your mat. Right up on your toes, push yourself back onto the heels and keeping the balance where it is, just straighten the legs. So the weight evenly distributed. So the blood is coming to the head, it's refreshing you. You can feel that stretch in the back of the legs. Just enjoy the pose, settle into it. And then we'll try the weaving dog. So up on your toes, start to bend those knees in, bring your body forward. Now up on those toes again, come back on the heels. Let it flow. Not holding this, it's flowing. And then bring the feet in, down on your knees, sit back on your heels, take the knees wider if you need to, to come into the extended child. Remember, support your head if you need to. It is a relaxation pose, so on each breath out, just let that breath release through the back. And then just lift your head, use your hands to walk yourself back up to your seated position. So that's the three dog positions. As I say, any problems with high blood pressure or detached retinas, anything like that, just do that tabletop, but it is a really lovely stretch. And you feel refreshed, the brain's gone, ooh, something interesting going on here. And your body's had a good work as well. So thank you very much. Namaste.